So we've got a situation with this e-bike battery. It doesn't want to charge and it doesn't deliver anything on the output. As you can see on the output, we cannot read more than 0.5 volts. Also, it doesn't charge. One of these chargers should turn red. The blue light here on the button is gone as well, which indicates that either the cells are dead or we've got a problem with the BMS. But since we've got some power here on the output, I don't think the BMS is the problem because otherwise we're going to read 0 volts. Instead, we could read something like 0.04 volts. And this is what you should read on a good battery, something between 32 and 40 volts. And here we go, we've got 40 volts on this one on the output. And the chargers will deliver 42 volts to the BMS and charge up the cells. This is an easy way to test your chargers, both of them work. So when it comes to diagnosing a problem like this, the best is to start with the easiest test and that is to check if the charger is actually delivering 42 volts. So here we go, we've got 42 volts. On this type of connector, the inside is the plus and the outside is the negative. Now the next step is to open up the case and check out if the cells have any power left in them. So on this battery case, it's quite simple. We've got a bunch of screws around here. If, for example, you've got this Bosch type battery, you're going to find the screws on the back here. You're going to need a T20. And once you open the case, it's going to be very similar process. You're going to see on this battery. All right. I don't think water enter in it. So on most of the batteries, you're going to find a fuse. Also, I forgot to mention it's important to check up the fuse. But anyway, the battery should charge without the fuse because this is for the delivery. The connection on the output looks good. I don't think that's the problem. And there is no much corrosion in here, by the way. And I think I have to remove this heat shrink in order to get access to the old pack. And the first thing is to inspect for any rust and damaged cells. In this situation, they look good. There is a little bit of corrosion here, but that's not dangerous at all. And then the second step is to identify how the groups are connected. And this is a very simple connection here because the groups are in parallel like that. It might be possible that you're going to find the groups in some strange grouping position, like for example, five cells here and then five cells here. Here is the starting one. This is obviously the positive side and the negative side is gonna be on the other side here. There are five cells per group. This is to increase the amperage, to increase the capacity of the battery. And then the 36 volts will result from this grouping of 10 cells in series. And now we're gonna be able to find out for a fact if the BMS is the problem or the cells are dead. So let's check how much power we've got on the cells here. And it looks like we've got 0.2 volts, where it's supposed to be at least 30 volts if the battery is completely discharged. However, I want to check also the series individually. So next step is to check all these 10 groups. Okay, so for the first group, 0.01. The second group, 0.09. The whole pack is completely dead. So basically from this point, you've got three options. You either throw the battery, buy a new one. The second option is to rebuild this battery and you need to replace every single cell. You basically build the battery from scratch because you need to just salvage the BMS, which is probably still working. Or you try to revive the battery by forcing this battery to charge. And you need to do that by bypassing the BMS because right now the BMS will not deliver 36 volts since it doesn't detect any power coming from the battery. So now the best way to force this battery charge is to find an adapter to your connector from the charger and the adapter will have two wires which you can connect them directly on the cells. But in my situation I don't actually need this charger anymore so I'm gonna just cut it and use the wires directly from the charger itself. 
Now the polarity of the terminals are connected correctly. If I reverse now the terminals, you're gonna see here a minus. This is gonna be on most of the voltmeters. So basically the red one is the plus and the blue one is the minus. So just make sure that the wires are connected properly in there. So the charger is flashing. Okay, we've got six volts on the voltmeter, seven volts, so it's increasing. Obviously, on most of the cells, this flat surface is going to be the negative and this top one is going to be the positive. Okay, so now it did reach 10 volts and if I connect the second charger to the regular port, you can see that it actually does start to charge, but it gives an error and I don't want to put a stress on the BMS. Now we did reach 17 volts and from this point it looks like the charger did stabilize and is delivering a constant flow of 42 volts and you can see the voltage is slowly slowly increasing. It's gonna take a while but that's a good sign it means that the battery will have some capacity left. But just to show you I can add the second charger and you can see how fast it goes up and the chargers are stable this red light doesn't flash anymore okay so after one hour and a half the voltage is almost 32 volts so we can connect the regular charger but i'm going to disconnect this temporary charger and i'm going to actually disconnect this charger as well and let's see if the voltage goes down very fast but it doesn't so that's a good sign and it's a good idea to keep an eye on the temperature of the battery. It shouldn't go too hot. Now the voltmeter can also go away because I can trust the battery to charge itself. From this point, I just have to keep an eye on the charger. It should be always on and this red light on. Now let's place the battery back. All right, so after a couple of hours, the battery is fully charged and I'm going to test it using this old electric bike setup. I just have to place the battery on this support here. Okay, the battery is connected. Now let's turn it on. And as you can see, it works. Now on this menu here, it doesn't say the range of the battery. So I cannot say how long this battery will last. So I don't know if you can see, but the throttle does respond. And of course, it gives an error because there is no wheel on it. Okay, so before ending this video, it's important to mention that the quality of the cells you've got on your battery are very important. Will determine if you can revive the battery or not, because I've tried and passed with some old cells from some power banks. I try to revive them, but then once I connect them and build up a battery, the battery didn't last even two days without using it. So this one did last, as you can see, we've got here full battery, full level. And you saw when I forced it to charge, it did take the charge a lot slower compared to a almost dead battery, which will immediately go up to its maximum voltage. Also keep in mind the other problems you can have like the BMS or the wirings. It's important to check those because for example, if the wirings are bad just for one group of cells, then that can discharge the battery a lot faster. So yeah, just analyze the situation you've got on your battery and go from there. Okay, so that was it. If you have any questions, write them down in the comments below. Have a nice day, take care, and I will see you in the next video.